Well, good evening. Welcome to our service this evening and uh, the cantata, The Miracle I've Seen. And uh, we're going to have a word of prayer and uh, let them get started tonight. And uh, let's ask the Lord to speak to our hearts this evening. All right, let's bow together in prayer. Father, we thank you for this evening. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity for us to gather together. And Lord, we're asking you to minister to our hearts through the cantata this evening, both through the music and the dramatization. Lord, I'm praying you'll help uh, all of those participating tonight, that they'll be able to do their very best, and the message will come through uh, this cantata this evening. And Lord, thank you for each of these who've come tonight, and I pray that you'll minister to their hearts as well. Move up and down these aisles and in and out of the rows tonight and minister to each and every heart and draw us closer to you because we were here this evening. May Christ be exalted in this time together this evening. In Jesus' name I ask it. Amen. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here. For he is risen, as he said, Come, see the place where the Lord lay. And tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. God Almighty, which was and is and is to come, give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who liveth forever and ever. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of Him. I stand in awe. I stand in awe. I stand in awe. In reverent fear of Your holiness, Your holiness divine. You are the mighty, risen Lord, King of the Welcome to Bible Baptist Church and the presentation by our music ministry of this year's cantata, The Miracle I've Seen. The Webster's Dictionary defines the word miracle as being an extraordinary event manifesting divine intervention in human affairs. When Jesus, God's Son, came to earth and lived among men, there were many such extraordinary events recorded. God's intervention in the lives of men, women, and children were a daily occurrence. Our time together this evening allows us to share just a few of the glorious miracles that Jesus performed in the lives of normal people, just like you and me. But miracles aren't exclusive to the pages of the Bible. I've personally experienced a miracle performed by Jesus himself. And in just a little while, I'll tell you in more detail about the miracle I've seen. But I can tell you why miracles happen. Because no matter who you are, no matter what you've done, no matter how alone you feel, 
Jesus Christ loves you. And just like this blind man, he wants you to personally experience the power and glory of God in your life. I've heard the group of men talking about me. It was nothing new. I've heard the question many times by those that were passing by. <clears throat> See, our people believe that sin or suffering and disease is a result of sin. And I've, I've accepted my portion in life long ago. I was in darkness, born in darkness, and that was that. So I wasn't angered by their question. But this man's answer was different than any other I'd ever heard. Neither hath this man sinned, nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in me. The works of God made manifest in me? What did he mean? He knelt down beside me and he said, I am the light of the world. I've heard of light, but I know nothing of it. Yet there's a man here kneeling beside me that claims to be the very source. I heard him spit upon the ground. Uh, I waited a moment. Suddenly I, I felt him smooth the wet clay over my eyes. I don't understand why he was doing this. It didn't make sense that a stranger would do this to me. Yet at the same time I felt comforted. And then he commanded me, he said, go, wash in the pool of saloon. I knew the way to the pool well enough. I, I am blind, but I've, I've learned to get around to the different important places like the pool. And besides, he spoke with such, such authority that I didn't even question him. I just went. <clears throat> the pool was busy with people coming up to and going down to it, but they were kind enough to let me feel my way. The water felt good in my eyes. When uh, suddenly the this, this surge went through my head and my eyes were burning. My eyes were burning? What? No, this, this is light, intense light. I can see people, water, trees. The sun, dear Lord, I could see. Neighbors that had known me for years couldn't believe what happened. The Pharisees also wouldn't believe that Jesus had such power. I had heard enough. Jesus had did a miracle in my life, and I would not have them steal that away from me. They said, He's a, whether he be a sinner or no, I don't know, but Whereas I was blind, I now see.
I had never seen so many people before. Well, not in one place anyway. It was easier just to count them, just to, just to count them in. But there must have been at least 5,000 of them. That's not counting all of the women and all the children that were there that day. And they were all, and they were all there in the, for the same reason. Just like me, they wanted to see Jesus and were all for the, and, and perform more miracles. That's why we walked miles and miles to, in a desert place and didn't, didn't even care that there was any food to eat except for mine. I knew they were hungry. I mean, they hadn't even thought to bring anything to eat for themselves. There, were, there was nowhere close for them to go to, and buy food. Their homes were t- too far away, and, they, and I was standing there with, and I was standing there with my lunch. Mother had pick, packed for me five small loaves of barley bread and two little fish. I heard of Jesus, asked one of the disciples how he planned to buy bread so that everyone could eat. What was Jesus thinking? I knew that he had his disciples um, that they weren't rich enough to buy bread for this huge crowd. Um, and where and were they <laughs> where there were to buy any. Then I felt a hand on my shoulder and I looked up. Another disciple, they called, Andrew, pointed me out to the master. I knew Andrew was trying to make a point to Jesus, but he took himself serious. He ordered Make him sit down. Then all the men and women and children sat together in a large group. Jesus walked over to me and, sa- and put his hand out. He wanted my lunch. I didn't know how I could help, help, but I gladly gave Jesus what I had. He took it and prayed a blessing over it. Then I began to hand baskets out to the disciples so that way they could serve the people. Serve them what, you might ask? Why? Serve them my bread and fish. That's what. The more baskets he filled, the more fish and there was to fill them. Can you believe it? The food never ran out until all the thousands of people were full. I'll never forget that day I saw Jesus perform a miracle with my little bit of bread and fish. Just a lunch of two fishes and five loaves of bread to the crowd must have seemed quite small. But the si- <laughs> but when Jesus had received it, everybody was fed. The little boy had given his all. Like the woman in the temple who gave her two mites, on the outside it seemed quite small. But the Savior said that in her he had taken delight, for she had given Jesus her all.
There he was, just sitting there. It was plain to see by his clothing he was a Jew, a Jewish man sitting on a Samaritan well. I had almost decided to go back, but I was thirsty and needed the water. I planned on ignoring him. If I was lucky, he went and started throwing rocks at me. I couldn't believe it. I had barely set my container down when he asked me to serve him. Give me to drink, he said. Of all the nerve, I did not hide my disgust. How is it that thou, being a Jew, asketh me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. His answer was strange. He said something about giving me living water. A he, a Jew, would actually give me a drink to quench my thirst. I continued to deride him, but he insisted. Whosoever drinketh of the water shall thirst again, but whosoever, whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall, thirst, shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. I'd have to admit, it sounded too good to pass up. Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. He then asked me to go get my husband. I answered him as innocently as I could. Sir, I have no husband. But he knew. He couldn't have known. But somehow, he knew. Thou hast well said I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands. And he that now now hast is not thy husband. So, he was a prophet. How else could he have known these things? Perhaps I can end his prying by invoking a higher authority. I know that when the Messiah cometh, he will tell us all things. He then told me what I think I already knew. He said, I speak unto thee, am he. And my heart leapt within me. He, it was a miracle. Here, he stood, the Messiah stood me face to face. It, he knew my simple life, and yet he was not throwing stones at me. He was not condemning me. He was calling me to everlasting life. I left my water pot and ran past a group of Jewish men carrying food and supplies. I ran into the city telling any and all men that would listen, Come! See a man which told me all things I ever did. Is this not the Christ? The offer Jesus made to me, he offers to all who are spiritually thirsty. Come and drink the water of life freely. Will you come and see the Savior of the world?
Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. That's what I remember Peter saying. But was he not merely voicing what we all felt to be true about Jesus? Had he not proven to us over and over and over again that he was indeed God in the flesh? Never was I more convinced of this than the day he took Peter, my brother James and I, way up high on the mountain where we were alone. And suddenly, Jesus was transformed right before our very eyes. His face shined as bright as the sun, and his clothes were as white as the brightest light. Oh, who were these two men? They, they just appeared, and Jesus called them by their name. Could it be Moses and Elijah? They were talking with Jesus. And suddenly, a bright cloud overshadowed us, and a mighty voice came from the cloud and said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. And then there was silence. And Jesus said, Tell no man about this vision until the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. But I hated it when he talked like that. He was always telling us that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things and die. But why did he have to die, I thought? He's God. Did we not see him turn water into wine? I watched as he walked on the water. We witnessed him raising people from the dead. But his words came to pass. They arrested him. And they condemned him. And they beat him relentlessly. And now there he was, hanging on the cross, so bruised and beaten that we could not even recognize him. And we watched as his blood just fell to the ground. Oh, the precious, precious blood of Jesus. And the crowd. The crowd could only mock and jeer him. They said, you saved others. Save yourself. But if they had only known his lifeless body suffered there on that cross only because he loved them. I couldn't understand it then, but I understand it now that every drop of blood that he gave in death was so that they, so that you and I might have life. Never before have I seen a greater miracle than on that day. Because it was your sins and mine that put him on that cross. Jesus willingly suffered the punishment that should have been ours. Do you see? The cross is a place where you can find forgiveness. Oh, that in the cross, you can find peace with God.
You know, it was amazing enough that Jesus had all the elements of the earth under his full control. I mean, even the wind and the waves obeyed his voice. But to see Jesus heal the blind and the lame and the sick and the deaf and the dumb left us all with an incredible sense of awe and wonder. Day after day, he showed such compassion and patience with everyone, no matter how tired he became. Well, he showed such compassion and patience with everyone except the demons and the religious leaders. He rebuked both of those groups with equal fervor. It was the chief priests, the scribes, and the Pharisees who consulted to have Jesus killed in the first place. And did they not gather a band of men together to go and arrest Jesus as he prayed in the garden? And was it not the chief priests and the Pharisees who upon Jesus' death went to Pilate and said, Sir, we remember what the deceiver said while he was still alive, that after three days Jesus told him, I will rise again. So we ask that you command that the sepulcher be made sure until the third day, lest the disciples come by night and steal the body away and say to the people, He is risen from the dead. But those same religious elders had to pay off the soldiers to lie because in spite of the Roman guard, when the third day came, Jesus' tomb was empty. Mary was the first to report that she had seen Jesus alive. When she returned back from the tomb, he spoke with her. I ran ahead of Peter and noticed that the mighty stone had been rolled away. And I glanced inside the grave and it was, Je it was empty. Just as Jesus told us he would, he had risen from the dead. Do you understand what this miracle means? That in conquering death, Jesus proved his power over death. It proved his power over sin, your sin and mine. We finally have access to heaven and salvation can be ours if we will but repent of our sin and place our faith in the risen Savior. Through Jesus we can be made free. Jesus has risen.
Jesus is alive. The force of the Roman armies could not hold him, and not even death itself could keep him in the grave. Jesus made his followers a promise. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Now, I'm not deserving of such a place, and neither are you. We're all sinners. God tells us that our hearts are desperately wicked, and we don't even know it. He also tells us that even the good things we try to do are filthy rags in His sight. We're without hope. I'm without hope. Doomed. That is, I was without hope until Jesus worked a miracle in my life. He showed me my true condition, and I turned from my selfish, sinful life. I repented because I saw the love that Jesus Christ had for me, and I placed my faith in Him as my Savior. I confessed Him as my Lord and my Master, and He has transformed my life. The Bible says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. The risen Savior made me a new creation. And now I have a home in heaven prepared for me. I wasn't there to see the blind man receive his sight. And I wasn't there to see the boy's lunch multiplied to feed thousands of people. I wasn't there to see the miracle of Jesus' resurrection from the tomb. But I did see him take a poor, lost, worthless sinner like me, forgive me of my sin, and save my soul. And that, my friends, is the miracle I've seen.